I first want to thank my opponent for being here today, call out for putting on this tournament, and congratulations on making it to the second round. Malala Yousafzai said, we cannot all succeed when half of us are held back. It is because I agree with this quote that I affirm today's resolution. Overall, feminism makes the world a better place for both men and women. Observation one, definitions. The following definitions are defined based on Merriam-Webster's dictionary. Feminism, the theory of political, economic, and social equality of the sexes. Observation two, weighing mechanism. My weighing mechanism for today's debate is utilitarianism, which means the greatest good for the greatest amount of people. Contention one, advantage economy. Sub Point A, when without gender equality, the economy will suffer. An article from the Washington Journal entitled Want to Boost Global Growth by Trillions Improve Gender Equality says gender equality is a critical economic challenge. If women who account for half the world's working age population do not achieve their economic potential, the global economy will suffer. Also, an article from the World Economic Forum entitled Our Economy Suffers When Our Rights Do shows that throughout years where women's rights have been increased, our economy has increased over 20 times. These two articles show a direct correlation with women's rights behind being hindered, also hindering our economy. Subpoint B, impacts. Impact one, equality in the workplace can increase our global economy by 26%. The aforementioned Washington Journal article goes on to say, in a full potential scenario in which women play an identical role in labor markets of that men, as much as 28 trillion or 26% could be added to the global annual GDP by 2025. This correlation shows how much per capita is being wasted with unequal rights. Impact two, inventions created by women. The following inventions came to pass by women inventors. Disposable diapers, dishwasher, electric hot water heater, fire escape, medical syringe, rotary engine, Kevlar, windshield wipers, and marine signal flares, just to name a few. These show that women have increased the quality of life, safety, and medically to benefit all sexes. Contention two, quality of life advantage. Subpoint one, lack of equality brings more stress on men and women. When men that have a family are the sole provider for a family, it increases their work load and their stress. When a man is working, he does not get to spend as much time with his family. A Business Insider article says that the average required cost of living in the United States in 2016 was $65,000 just for basic necessities. And the same article said that the average income of one individual is $51,000. We see that the increase of stress that can have on one person. Subpoint two, impacts. One, more people with equal working rights equals more money for the family. Two, with women being able to provide help for their family, it allows the man more time to be with their children. A CNN Money article entitled No Stay-at-Home Mom or Dad but Co-Leading said that children that work in dual-income families show more success in the classroom. C, more productive men. The same study showed that men that spend an equal amount of time at home with their families were 85% more productive in work environments than those that did not. It's because of these two advantages that I affirm today's resolution. Okay, and I thank my uh, opponent for taking the debate as well. <clears throat> now, we can all admit that throughout time, social movements change, and feminism is not one singular movement. And I'll get to the points made by my opponent after I explain this. So this has not existed as a continuous social movement. Feminism in the world we live in has come in three separate waves. In fact, most feminist movements, especially in America, have been guided and controlled by the shadow government. Men like David Rockefeller are behind feminism. Just Google Rockefeller Foundation and Women's Studies and you'll get a roughly half a million citations. Rockefeller himself stated, <clears throat> we started and funded the women's movement so that we could tax both sexes. That way we could put women to work and take their children to control. Now the issue I have with the feminist movement of today is they're trying to get equal rights with men in a society in which we are all enslaved. And the modern day feminist movement doesn't do anything to free the women of places like Palestine, where it's not politically convenient for them to raise women's rights issues for those people because the media that they are largely controlled by is not going to do anything for the Palestinian people. Now, basically what my uh, opponent's saying here is, is that if women had equal pay, I guess, in the workplace, then you would see a massive amount of benefit for society. Well, women already have equal pay in the workplace. And I think one of the main differences you see there is that because you know women have to take leave for maternity leave, or they have to be stay-at-home moms for a few years, 
that they don't have the same continuous time at a single career, which is why when you look at, you know, women that, you know, <clears throat> just versus men, you see a difference there. But when you look at, you know, unmarried women or women without children and compare that to unmarried men or men without children, women are already making, you know, statistically more. So, you know, it, it doesn't really, you know, jive with reality what he's saying. It's just, you know, more of the same rhetoric and he's citing all of the same things like the World Economic Forum, which is, you know, the Rockefeller Foundation are behind that as well. So. Okay, um, a couple of things. Let's start with the opponent's case. Um, on the opponent's case that he goes to this Rockefeller situation and he says that there's this shadow government that's running the feminist movement and that's starting everything. First off, we're not just talking about the feminist movement. We're talking about feminism in general. If you look to my definitions at the beginning of the debate, it specifically says that we're talking about this theory of equality among the sexes throughout the world. Um, so we're not just talking about the movement itself. We're talking about does the equal rights make it better for everyone. But I wanted to specifically what he said. He said that Rockefeller said we started this to be able to tax both sexes as their incomes. Okay. My first argumentation on this is great. That's the, it goes straight into my economy. If you're taxing both sides, yes, the government's getting more money, but so is the individual also. This is boosting our economy directly because you are having more taxpayer money coming to us when they're working and earning that money at the regular basis. That's no more unfair than taxing men. So there's no correlation that I see directly into this. And then he goes in and says that we're doing this so we can enslave their children. Um, I don't really see the link, and I'm going to ask that my opponent explain how feminism and women working makes children enslaved. I don't understand that direct link to there. And then we go to the media with the Palestinians and how about the media of all of this different stuff turns things and goes in that aspect. Again, I don't see the feminism link. I don't see how this directly affects the aspect of women being able to have the same rights as men. If it's saying that they're not going to, I'm not proving that it needs to happen. I'm just proving that it happening is a better thing for everyone in this hypothetical realm of this debate today. Then going on to my case, he says that right now women have the same rights and equal pay. Yes, there's no law against it, but if you look to the Washington Journal article that I posted earlier, it says that on average in the same positions, women make 30% less than men. So they're not doing that. And it also says that whether it's legal or not, women are overlooked for certain jobs because they say that it's a man's job, not allowing every position to be fulfilled by a woman. So we see that because of that, all of my links are in place. When you look to other countries, there are other countries that don't recognize women as a situation to be able to work. We're not just solely talking about the United States. States, all my links and my articles were for a global impact. Then we look to my inventions article, which completely drops, which shows how the women inventors and having these rights has created better things for all of us. And then we look to my quality of life advantage, which specifically says that actually when men and women have equal rights in the workplace, it specifically says that it increases the amount of work and effort that a child has in the classroom because they have more time with both parents at home, which directly turns against his slavery opinion about the children. So, uh, um, again, that's what I look at. Okay, so the reason Rockefeller said <clears throat> that it was to take their children to control is because when you remove the parents from the house and you have both parents working, what you're claiming is better for the children, then who's taking care of the children? They're at daycare or they're with strangers who are raising them. And then when the parents get home, they're too tired to actually do anything. So they're plugging children into electronic devices, televisions. They're not taking the time to raise their children anymore, which is why we see so many dysfunctional families. The family unit itself is under attack in our country by the same people that created these, you know, things like the feminist movement. And I'm sorry, but when you're talking about feminism, we're not, we're talking about, the question is, does feminism make the world a better place. We're not talking about feminism of the 1950s. We're not talking about, you know, the women's suffrage movement. We're talking about today. That's how I see this debate as. And today, the modern feminist movement has to be examined and looked at. You can't just ignore what they're out there protesting. And, you know, when you look at it, let's see, the last two major women's marches in America 
had a clear democratic political agenda behind them. And it's obvious you had the highlighted speaker at the Women's March in DC on January 21st, their biggest speaker there that was, you know, paraded around was Madonna. And what did she say? She says, yes, I've thought an awful lot about burning down the White House. So I'm not exactly sure how that type of political action, which is what the modern feminist movement is, and that's what we have to look at is the modern feminist movement making the world better. It's not because it's not about, you know, egalitarian rights. You know, it, it's a system where, you know, one out of every three years of our current federal income taxes are being taken from us and given to a private central bank to do God knows with what. It's not used for, you know, anything to make our society better. So saying that, you know, getting women into the workplace to tax them is a good thing is actually ridiculous. Giving the government more money to go do anything is ridiculous. It's a monopoly of force that they use to, you know, basically illegally tax us for a national debt that we had nothing to do with in the first place. So I feel that my opponent is trying to gather away from the actual resolution and get into more of like a government conspiracy theory here. But I hope that I can prove throughout that how that's not the case. And we're really focusing on the goodness of feminism and how it has improved. Um, and I want to touch over what he said and then go into some of the stuff that he hasn't really touched on yet. Um, the first point is he answers my question about the kids and he says that we have to put them with daycares or with strangers and with different aspects of that aspect while we work first off yes but we put them in school also um, and we put them in daycare of strangers but i don't see how that collects to the government these are private institutions um these are private companies that work they're not government ties they're not given propaganda in that so i don't understand how the daycare of the strangers argument still links um but then we go into this electronic devices portion where he says that they get home and the parents don't want to deal with them and they have the electronic devices first the first turn on that is going to be my contention too and you look to the quality of life situation when parents both cohabitate and they co-work and they get to then share that load together they actually spend more time with their children which is specifically stated um, in my article from cnn money but but two, this whole electronic devices argumentation is not unique to today's debate because whether or not the parents are actually um, home or not, we still see that electronic devices have been on the rise. Whether it has anything to do with that, they're actually watching them with their parents and with their families. They're watching them on their own, whether parents have it or not. It's shown in our classroom. So this whole government propaganda through electronic devices has nothing to do with feminism and I still don't see that link to this debate. Um, the Rockefeller quote, again, I still, the taxation is not a bad thing. Again, that gets into a government conspiracy theory that he's saying, but it still boosts our economy. If you look to the Washington Journal article that says that it boosts our global economy, not even talking domestic, by 26%. Um, so we can specifically see those economic benefits that are being um, gone. Then he goes to the whole Madonna's quote and about the income of taxes. Again, first off, Madonna, I don't see the link to the general public of the government that Madonna is saying. She said she'll burn the White House. If we want to get into a freedom of speech debate, that's fine. These women have the right to march, just like any other movement has had the right to do these different things. We can look to Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, many different aspects. We look to this as the fact that they have the freedom of speech to do that, and that's written in our Constitution, so don't take that away. Um, and then we're going to look back to the contentions that I gave in the beginning. He never really talks about the women's inventions impact. He never talks about my quality of life impacts. So when we look to a utilitarianism or the greater good for the greatest amount of people, you're going to look to those advantages claimed in the Washington Journal article, the CNN Money article. You're going to look to the inventions that we have because of women equality, and you're going to see that feminism. I want to go back to the 1950s argument that he made. First, we're going to look empirically at that feminism back then has been successful, and we see that movement carrying forward, and we see that when those rights were constricted, we saw bad things such as economy happen. Once again, I'll go back to the statement I started with at the very beginning of this, which is the feminist movement is not one whole subsidiary movement. And what we're talking about in this debate is, is modern feminism, the modern feminist movement, which is this third wave intersectional feminism, is that making the world a better place? And I say no, because what they are, you know, organizing and what they're protesting for has nothing to do with egalitarianism or equal rights for women. What they are out there protesting for, and I'll read you their Pledge of Liberation 
from the Women's March website. And it states, we believe that all issues are women's issues, from racial justice to environmental justice, to disability rights, to indigenous sovereignty. Nothing demonstrates this more than the devastating impact of the hashtag license to discriminate executive action in the House vote to repeal the Affordable Care Act on women and femmes of all backgrounds nationwide. Now, I'm sorry, but the Affordable Care Act is an unconstitutional tax on every American and should never have been ratified by the Supreme Court. Furthermore, it has absolutely zero to do with benefit, benefiting society or women's rights. The ACA, better known as Obamacare, was a sweetheart deal made by the puppet president for Big Pharma in the medical industry. And the fact that modern feminists have to pledge to keep this charade in place is 100% proof that the modern feminist movement, which is what I am arguing against, does not benefit society at all. Now, has you know the first two waves of feminism benefited society? Yes, you know, you've noted the inventions thing, and obviously giving women the right to vote was a good idea. What I'm arguing against you here is that today, feminism is not making the world as it stands today a better place because the feminists that exist today have nothing to do with egalitarianism. It's about empowering women over men. They're not trying to you know, get equal you know, representation in jobs where, you know, it's like the garbage guy in the back of a truck. What they want is they want, you know, to be given these high paying CEO jobs. And I already explained to you earlier and you ignored it, which is the studies that you're stating are looking at just men versus women. But you can't do that because women have to take care of children and stuff. So if you look at studies that show equal pay, for women that did not have kids and men that did not have kids, women at the same jobs are actually being paid higher. And I can provide you studies that prove that. Okay. So first idea, we're going to go back to this whole modern feminist movement here that we say. Again, he's adding words to the resolution when he says that because it just says feminism as a whole makes the world a better place. I've proven how that has happened over and over again, even in the modern feminist movement to the others. Um, so I don't see how that is direct correlation and he can limit the debate to just that when I'm covering the spectrum of feminism as a whole um, in today's culture and in the past and showing how it has succeeded. Um, but going on to his, when he reads the Pledge of liberations and he said all issues are women's issues i 100 percent agree with this statement because all women's are men's issues all issues are women's issues all issues are uh every race's issues every sexual orientation issue if there is an issue in the united states it applies to everyone no matter your gender your sex or your um, racial discrimination or any of those things it applies to everyone so they are correct when they say that then he goes into this affordable care act and says that again it's a non-tax and we're getting into this governmental conspiracy theory that it has nothing to do with feminism. If the women that are in these marches agree with that, that's fine. But they have the right as an American, they have a right as a citizen, they have a right as a human being to be able to do that. And it's the point where we take that away, where we see the feminism movement being needed. They have the right to express themselves into whatever way they want. They have freedom of speech and that exists. And when we take that away, we see a slippery slope of rights and you're actually contradicting the feminist movement and contradicting civil liberties and we specifically see in that we can say how you're d decreasing democracy through that. So absolutely, they have every right is a women's issue because it, every right is everyone's issue. Um, then we go to, I want to talk about how he talks about my articles and says that my articles are in the past and they're all of those things again, but that shows how feminism has made the world a better place. When you look at the inventions and the things that have been made by women, if these rights never existed, we wouldn't have that. So overall, the world has been better advantageous because of that. Um, and then he says that, and I want to specifically say what he says on my second contention. He says, women have to take care of children. No, that's the whole point of all of this. If you look 
hope to my second contention when men are f helping together, when a family exists together and has equal responsibility is where we capture these benefits and advantages that I've talked about. It's that culture right there that's saying women are the only people that take care of children. That is what's wrong with these statements and what's wrong with these theories. And you can't say that it just applies to single women because the rate of single dads has increased tremendously over the past 10 years. You have single fathers that are having to do these same responsibilities. But no, you just specifically said that women have to take care of children. That's where this whole problem exists. I didn't say they had to. I said you have to take that into account. What I said is women have to take care of children and you have to take that into account in your study when you're looking at men versus women on a big scale. When you're just categorizing men and women into two groups, you have to take into account that more women leave work and take maternity leave than men do and they take it for longer and they also take breaks in their career more than men do that's the point and you can disagree with that all you want and how can i limit the scope of this argument to the modern feminist movement because i'm looking at the title it doesn't say overall feminism made the world a better place that would be the argument about what it did in the past what it says is overall feminism makes that the word makes would be as in today it's making the world a better place and today, I would say that the feminist movement as of today is making the world a worse place. And one of the reasons why is because they attack the very thing you're saying that you hold so dear, which is freedom of speech. They're well known for stifling freedom of speech in the women's marches and everywhere else. Just go look at all of the videos online where people go down to the women's marches like squatting slob and try to discuss with them ideas and things like that, and they all turn and freak out, and they can't even express why they're down there wearing pussy hats. It's because the modern feminist movement has absolutely nothing to do with you know, promoting civil rights. It has become, as I said, a you know, weapon of the Democrat machine, which is why they are trying to get things like the ACA kept. It has nothing to do with actual women's rights. That's why they don't protest for Palestinian women's rights. That's why they don't protest for Saudi Arabians women's rights. You don't see that type of thing by the modern movement, which is what I'm talking about. And it's obvious, like, you know, it, it's just, I don't know. That's all I have to say. Okay, so we're going to start by talking about the framework that I laid out at the beginning. I provided definitions and utilitarianism uh, as a weighing mechanism for this round. And then in this last speech, he wants to say that the definition makes makes it present tense. It does not. It says feminism makes the world a better place. It sh I've shown how past feminism has made the current world a better place. I've shown how uh, current feminism has made the world a better place. And I've given statistics that show the route of feminism that's necessary to increase our economy. Then you're going to look to the utilitarianism mindset and weighing mechanism. At the end of the day, you're going to vote for what does the greatest good for the greatest amount of people as far as feminism. Is feminism better for more people? You're going to look to my advantages that I've claimed specifically that go untouched. You're going to look towards the inventions that we wouldn't have without feminism today. You're going to look to the impacts of how stifling women's rights and stifling our freedom of speech and stifling these different things actually decreases the uh, the economy and will have us heading in the negative direction. You're going to look towards the fact that the quality of life of the individual helps the productivity within the home. And we specifically see through the statistics and things that I have given how feminism as a whole increases increases quality of life and increases economy. So when you look to the advantages that we have here, you see that uh, we are in a utilitarianism, greatest good for greatest amount of people, feminism is going to weigh out. Then we're gonna look to his case specifically. One, he gives no direct impacts. Okay, so great. He says that the this democratic movement specifically is happening. He never points out where that's bad. There's a Republican in office currently here. He says the Affordable Care Act is a tax situation. And he goes into this whole government conspiracy theory that he thinks believes and exists into this place. But he never gives us the impact of that it happens. Um, he says that this stipends the freedom of speech and he never gives sources or, or a re rhetoric showing that that specifically happens. He just says that we stipend the freedom of speech. But no, we have these marches that were participated uh, nationwide by millions 
millions of people that were showing freedom of speech specifically. They didn't allow other people not to speak. They never said you cannot speak. They gave their opinions and said that they didn't feel that they were being heard. At the end of the day, this goes against our constitution if we are not allow that to happen and the slippery slope begins to continue. When you look to this debate and the utilitarianism, greatest good for greatest amount of people, the weighing mechanism that was given, and you see the advantages that the affirmative have given, I hope that at the end of the day, you will agree that feminism, past and present, has made the world a better place for men and women. He's never shown how this affects men and women in a bad light when I have greatly shown the opposite. Well, he said it again there at the end. So thank you for making my point, which was, he said, feminism has made the world the better place. He said it right there at the end, and it has. But the modern feminist movement, as I continue to say, only serves the benefit of the same social influencers that created the movement in the first place. The same banksters who get to tax all the now working and enslaved women that are enslaved in the same system where they fought for equal rights to be equal to their male counterparts that are also enslaved by the same Federal Reserve banksters. It's a society where the, the husband and wife almost have to work to survive, both, if, especially if they have children nowadays. We lose 30% of our paycheck to a bank, and now they have all of our wives and all of our women working for them as well. It's, you know, and children are being tossed into the warm hands of the TV and the state education system and daycares where strangers are raising our children and we're no longer able to have the family units and the family things that we held so dear for so long. You know, our children are being indoctrinated into an education system that was created by the same banksters that created the women's movement. If you look at the education board, the Rockefellers were highly influential in that as well. So what they've done is, is they've taken the women out of the household and put them in the workplace. And then they've taken the children out of the household and indoctrinated them, which is why we have such a morally corrupt and bankrupt society that we have today. And, you know, the freedom of speech thing, I did provide you the source. You can go look at multiple videos of people going down to the women's march, such as YouTuber Squatting Slav, and I can provide you with countless other YouTubers that have gone down there like Luke We Are Change and continue on where people have gone down to these protests and merely just tried to have a discussion with these feminists, these modern feminists, and they shut down that person. They, you know, get in their way. They won't have discussion with them. You know, they go and they shut down stuff. And I'm not a fan of Milo Yiannopoulos, but he's been kicked out of campuses and kicked out of colleges because of this modern feminist movement, which shuts down freedom of speech. And it's a continuous thing that we see this feminist, you know, which is now somewhat tied to the SJW movement has made the world a worse place in recent memory. So when we're talking about has feminism, you know, overall feminism makes the world a better place. No, in the modern day age, it is making the world a worse place by breaking down the family unit. Real quick, I only have 33 seconds, but he regresses himself. He specifically says by putting these people in daycare and taking our women into work, this is the problems that we're having of this situation. The only solution of that is to keep the women at home and not make this to have our children there, which would digress the situation and have the economic disadvantages that I specifically said from the beginning. His only solution is to go back to pre-woman's rights. As far as freedom of speech, again, they're still having this talk and they're actually having their conversations and People are talking about it. So freedom of speech exists. Well, if the feminists, the modern feminists have their way, freedom of speech won't exist. And you can see that through countless different, you know, situations where they interact with people. But, you know, um, I would say that in the modern day and age, that feminism is making the world a worse place. And I don't think that women shouldn't have the right to work. That goes back to feminism of like the 1960s. And I'm not saying we need to go back to that. I'm saying we need to change the model entirely and go to a new system where you don't have government, you know, stepping in the way where you wouldn't have banksters enslaving both the sexes. And I think that if the modern feminist movement would get behind a actual egalitarian movement 
something like, you know, getting rid of the Federal Reserve System and giving everyone the economic freedom that they deserve, that the modern feminist movement would be making the world a better place, but it's not doing that. They're getting behind causes like keeping the American, you know, the <laughs> Affordable Care Act in place, which is a policy that makes the world a worse place. It only helps big pharma companies. And, you know, that's, it's just the modern feminist movement is not making the world a better place. There's no proof to that. And that's where I'm going to leave.